well. Hello there, everybody, and welcome back. I don't know if you recognize me anymore, but it is me. Evan Edinger, everyone's favorite American British man living in London. This haircut was revealed in last week's video, if you missed it, where I detailed the last 10 years of uploading every single Sunday on my YouTube channel, how much my hair has changed, face has changed, content has changed, and we as a people online have changed. So if you missed that, I do recommend it. But today's video is an Ask Evan, throwing it back for a little bit of a q and A. I'm answering all the questions that maybe I avoided in the past, and maybe I just wanted to answer these questions because they were the most upvoted on my YouTube page. So without further ado, let's jump in. All right, and the first question is, how did you feel emotionally after cutting your hair off in one go? When I did the same, it felt liberating in ways I cannot compare. Well, leading up to it, I was very stressed, mostly because I have so many videos that I've like filmed bits for and I haven't necessarily completed. So kind of felt like I couldn't ever cut my hair until I tied all my loose ends up. And then I realized none of that really matters. I think the long hair had been stressing me out for quite a long time. I didn't necessarily really like the way I looked, but I also hated how other people commented either positive or negative on my hair. I hated that it was a part of me that everyone seemed entitled to have an opinion on. And I was like, no, please stop. And I just disliked the sensory overload of constantly feeling it, tugging on it, having it all over the place. No. You know what? Very happy. So when I finally got the haircut done, uh, which I believe should be on my second channel, hopefully in the next couple days, ah, it was actually quite relieving. The first two days I was still like kind of throwing my head around from how much weight was there, but wow. I feel so much lighter, both mentally and physically. All right, this was a big one. Uh, what prompted you to start pronouncing your name as Edinger rather than Edinger in your videos? There's actually a defining point you can actually notice when I switched. And if you watched my video last week on me going through the different eras of my YouTube channel over the last 10 years, one, I started learning German and two, my father had passed away. My father had always pronounced the name Edinger as it is of Germanic origin. And I'd always just pronounced it Edinger to go against that, just to be different. It is traditionally pronounced Edinger. I was, you you know, just pronouncing it differently just to do so. And it was a combination of both of those things. And I always kind of played with it. It didn't really matter that much to me, but that's actually how I started my talk at the photography and video show I was at in Birmingham last week. I uploaded the full talk on my second channel. I started off saying, hey, this presentation was meant to be done by Evan Edinger, but he couldn't make it. I'm Evan Edinger. I don't know, it's, it's silly stuff like that. But if, if you're interested, it was a talk about, you know, how to get good at vlogging in my opinion, or at least how I've lasted this long on the platform. Next up we have, I feel your sense of style has been steadily improved for a while. Bars. Bars? Is this some sort of Gen Z slang I'm not aware of? Is it like, yeah, your style looks like uh, you could work at a bar. Okay. Would love to hear your take on anything fashion. Favorite brands. How and where do you shop? Do you look for certain materials and cuts? Your videos are awesome, by the way. Seeing your growth is very inspiring. All right, thank you very much, uh, Bars. First off, thank you, very kind. Secondly, I've never really considered myself uh, too big into fashion. Uh, during lockdown, though, is when I started religiously researching this type of thing. Because before 2020, my sense of fashion was just going into a random high street shop and going, oh, that's a nice shirt, and then I would wear it. It wouldn't necessarily go with other things in my wardrobe, but I liked the shirt, so that was kind of it. However, after researching a lot more, watching a lot of YouTube videos and trying to figure out what my sense of style was. One, as most of you probably realized in lockdown, my number one goal is to feel really comfortable. I really don't wanna wear articles of clothing that do not feel nice on me, that either cause me to chafe or uh, don't fit me fully correctly and don't make me feel good about myself. So that was like the number one thing in any items of clothing that I bought after 2020. Had to be super comfortable. And two, I really just wanted to make sure I had the basics down. Basic colors, basic things that I, I feel like would work with me. So a standard white t-shirt, a black t-shirt, navy, that type of thing. And then building out things like overshirts and stuff like that. For the most part these days, I've made it so that I don't really ever go shopping for clothes. I'm never hunting. I'm never going to shops that I don't know of. I pretty much just buy clothes from Lululemon. Uh, they're really soft. They fit me really well. And big, big, big one here is none of the clothes wrinkle. Even though I've worn like this shirt for three, four years now and constantly wearing it, traveling with it, it looks brand new. Same with the t-shirts, same with the, the trousers and everything else. I do also get my flannels from L.L. Bean just because I've always been a big fan of them. Uh, there was one in the Marlton, New Jersey uh, where I'd used to go and be like, oh my gosh, the clothes are so soft. I wish I could get this nice flannel. So now I've got quite a few of those. Plus it's nice to never have to iron any of my clothes again. And the, the technical fabrics are super good at like wicking sweat away, even though it's not gym wear, it's very, very nice. For the most part, my goal with purchasing clothes was I want to buy things that 
I have in my wardrobe forever. I know that might sound unrealistic, but I, I'm very big fan of buy it for life rather than, you know, buy something that's currently trendy and then is no longer trendy in two years and you stop wearing it. And so you've spent money, you know, that item has been created and then has to go into waste or, I don't wanna do with that. I'd rather just buy things that are really good, uh, always in fashion for the most part in terms of like the, the colors that I get are very neutrals. I like earthy tones and, yeah, it kind of simplifies things a bit. Maybe this has been asked before. I'm a pretty new viewer, but what got you into photography? Uh, my dad was actually a photographer. He loved taking photos. He would take me out and he gave me my first ever film camera when I was like 12 or 13. And I just really enjoyed going out and taking photos of trees and leaves and autumn. And that's pretty much what got me into it initially. So I always felt like I had a good eye for certain things. I won a photography competition in high school when I was like 17 and I was really proud. It was just a photo of some leaves, but I loved the colors and I tried to like line up things to look nice and I got like second place, that's not so bad. So further from there, because I got so many opportunities to travel with a lot of different brands and tours and boards that would send me out, I'd always bring my camera and try and capture things. And because on those trips, you get a lot of actual photographers, I was really inspired by a lot of them to just hone my craft and get good. Especially when I was like, wow, how did you take that photo? And I ask simple questions like, what are the settings? As if that's what it is. It's practice, understanding like how to look through the viewfinder and change all five dimensions of the camera to get exactly the composition you want. Like I'm really proud of this simple photo. It's a portrait of me with my hair cut, uh, shot in Turnham Green. There's leading lines of the path that go right there. Even the horizon line, all of them kind of meet behind me where I want you to look. Those are like tiny little things that make the photo more interesting. How do you typically deal with the inevitable where are you from question when people hear your accent? So I think I've answered this one before, so apologies if you've heard this before, but I pretty much have the same exact response I do every single time even if the person I'm with has already heard me say it so many, so many times. That is, oh, I'm actually down the road in Chiswick. As soon as I do that, it immediately gaslights the person into thinking, oh, maybe they misheard some sort of American twang. And then they go, oh, oh, I'm sorry. I th thought I heard a bit of an American accent. And I go, oh, actually, no, it's actually down the road from Turnham Green, uh, whatever accent that was. And then eventually after about 20 seconds, I then go, I'm just kidding, I'm from New Jersey. Just because I gotta mix it up every once in a while. It's just a question everyone's gonna ask. So I just throw it down and I practice a little bit of my uh, British accent. What's your fave thing to have with coffee slash tea? With coffee I actually just like having coffee. I don't necessarily need anything, but if I did have to pick something, it would be a coffee cake. And by coffee cake, I mean American coffee cake. You know, the nice crumbly cinnamony one, not the dreadful ones they have in the UK, which are usually dry, covered in nuts and don't taste anything like coffee cake. Sorry. But when it comes to tea, milk chocolate digestives are S tier, absolutely. Hello, Evan. I have wondered, out of your many travels over the years, what places have made a difference in your life? Has the various travels helped you find a path in life that you feel like you're going in the right direction? So in terms of the travel experiences I've had that have had the biggest impact, I think very clearly those are just ones I've done with friends. Traveling with a large group of friends, small group of friends. I've enjoyed my solo trips, like I've done amazing trips to New Zealand alone uh, and Australia alone, which was really nice. But trips in which I'm with a large group of friends, usually some sort of road trip, God, they're just so memorable. They absolutely just feel like one of the greatest trips that I've been on every single trip I've gone on with friends. So if you have a group or if you can convince two or three other people to join you, I would highly recommend. It is so much better than solo or partner travel just because there's just a different energy. Where's the video in German that you alluded to? Nice haircut, by the way, thank you. So originally I was planning on making my fully in German video part two. Uh, as soon as I came back from Berlin, which was like October, November, that got pushed back because I had to make the other video about the, you know, the other thing. And then uh, it just kept being pushed back because I had other videos that I was really interested in. And I felt like the German video you know, wouldn't necessarily bring me much of a new audience. And then I started getting stressed about it. And even though I literally fully scripted the video in German months ago, I just keep pushing it back because I've got all these other videos. So it will be out at some point this year. I don't know when. It's literally just fun little stories from my time in Berlin, but in German. It'll be fun. But it's gonna take some time. <laughs> What's your workout routine? It's honestly just very standard stuff. I work out about three to four times a week. And of those times, I make sure to hit all the muscle groups equally. So pushing and pulling, uh, squats, also RDLs, also core. So just making sure I cover, you know, all the bases pretty much to make sure I'm not looking like a Dorito, even though that would be a tasty snack. Annoyingly, I end up having the most gains on my legs because they're so long, you can't really tell. And plus, I 
I'm on video, you don't even know. I've got beefy legs now. You'll never know. How's your progress with the piano going? Actually quite swell. After I relieved this constant pressure on myself to do everything all of the time, it's actually been going really well. I use it to procrastinate. Uh, I've actually just been practicing some Mario songs that I'd like to learn rather than, you know, following this uh, book that I've been having. And that way, I'm enjoying it a bit more. I'll probably go back to using the actual studying book for piano later, but in the meantime, I'm just playing some Dire Dire Docs and enjoying myself. Oh, this is a good question. We have, what are your recommendations for places to take first time tourists in London? So I've actually been planning a video about this very question, uh, hopefully coming out in May or June. My friend Yarina from Finland is coming to visit and I figured, oh, I really want to take her around London. And then I was like, you know what? I would be able to, create this 24 hour itinerary of like what to do if you have one day in London as a tourist that would come from me, a true Londoner. So I figured uh, that would be a good video. I don't know how I'll film it at this point. Maybe I have to get someone to help me film it, but stay tuned for that because I'll answer it in a full video, hopefully. Could you recommend any good restaurants in central London? Why has it gotta be central London? It's boring, but also, I mean, just thinking on the top of my head, Burger and Beyond is pretty good. It's like really good burgers. So try that place out if you haven't had it. They're tots. They've got the tots, they're very good. If you could start life all over again, would you still move to the UK? I don't like questions where you have to like change decisions. My life is here. Everything that I've done in the past has created this version of me. So I'm very happy with this version of me. Lame answer. However, uh, if you were prime minister, what reforms would you make? Interesting. So if I were prime minister, first of all, one, we'd be doing the HS2 again to bring high-speed rail up north. Two, we would then be increasing all of the public transit options in the north. So I'm talking much more rails in between the major cities up there. Also, I'd have another underground line for South London to better connect people living south of the river. And of course, where's this money gonna come from? I'm going to basically ensure we close all those crazy tax loopholes that allows these insanely wealthy corporations to avoid paying taxes. It feels like, why isn't anyone doing that? Also fully nationalize the rail again and bring the prices down so that they're cheaper than flights. What is your necklace? It looks like the ones the Catholics wear. The Catholics, actually, yeah, they might wear one of these because this is St. Christopher, patron saint of travelers. I really liked the look of it. Uh, it's from the TV show Dark, or rather it was in Dark, one of my favorite shows. I also like traveling, win-win. I don't really have any sort of religious connotation to it. It's just a nice vibe, I guess. Favorite British slang you now use? In it. I use in it all the time. That's just a word that is in my vernacular. What music have you been listening to? Well, Porter Robinson came out with a new single called Cheerleader, and I've been listening to that on repeat, as well as Jungle came out with a new album called Volcano, and boy, we got some vibes, all about that candle flame, yes. I feel like this is gonna be a good summer for music. Do you plan to move out of your flat in the next few years? Well, I mean, I really love my flat. This is where I'm living at the moment. And the only reason I would ever leave this place is if I managed to secure a house somewhere, west probably, with trees. Uh, financially, nowhere near that happening. So I'm currently in the stage where I'm just saving up lots and lots of money so that I one day will then, yes, sell this on and then buy some sort of house with a garden. Favorite UK shop to shop at is uh, Morrison's. I just always feel like they're a good value. They're good vibes. It reminds me of the really nice shops in New Jersey, like ShopRite, where I was like, ah, it's really clean. They have like a little butcher's area, a little cheesemonger area. The vibes are good. Are you ever planning on doing a proper meetup again? Honestly, probably not. I think that era is definitely much in the past. Like that's like the era of vlogging as discussed in my video last week, very much not really going to be a thing going forward. However, I mean, if you do catch me at some sort of convention, if I'm invited to some sort of convention, like when I was at the photography and video show in Birmingham a couple weeks ago, I did my little talk and I did chat with a lot of you afterwards that came up to ask things just because that's nice. It's way, way, way lower maintenance than the meet and greets of yore. It is wild that whenever I would like travel this place and that, I would always make sure every city that I visited, I had some sort of meet and greet, some sort of meet up. We had like a Facebook event for it. Every city in Australia, I did a meet and greet with Dodie. It's wild. I just feel like that era is behind us, you know? Oh, what is the worst movie you've ever seen that you still think about? Well, the worst three movies I've seen in the last decade are The Greatest Showman, Fantastic Beasts 2, and Ant-Man 3. Now I've already reviewed the first two films I've just talked about on my YouTube channel and surprisingly both of those videos did really well. So hypothetically I should just start doing movie reviews again every once in a while. 
at least when the film is really bad, because boy, was Ant-Man 3 one of the worst films I've ever seen. Doesn't help that they invited me to it. I didn't have to pay any money to see that film. And God, I would actually have paid money to avoid it from how awful it was. It's very much everything wrong with Disney and Marvel wrapped up into a just boring, boring, boring film. Imagine just seeing actors in front of green screens for three hours with unimaginative, AI looking generated, reused Star Wars looking backgrounds of nothingness that doesn't make any sense, that doesn't add any value. And it's one of those stories where the ending is pretty much like a, it was all a dream. There's no stakes, nothing ever really mattered. And you wake up and, oh, it's like this film didn't even have to be made. Such a shame, because Ant-Man 1 was actually uh, really funny. Ant-Man 3, horrible. Maybe all of that money could have gone spent to, I don't know, an independent director making something that he actually cared about rather than just this colorful waste of space. Tell me if you want me to get back into movie reviewing. I'll upload one every once in a while. We'll see. Will you do cooking videos, please? I like those. Well, I appreciate that you like those, but statistically speaking, algorithmically speaking, uh, most of my audience do not. So as much time and effort as I put into my video on the green bean casserole, I, I really enjoyed that because I really do enjoy cooking and I also love videography. So it was really fun to make that cooking video. Not as many people watched it to constitute me making more cooking videos. So it would have to be something I really, really wanted to do to spend so much time making a video that uh, didn't basically break even. So that that's pretty much the end of that, sadly. What was your first camera? Well, my first camera was the webcam on my MacBook at the time. That was what I was using. Uh, and then after that, I did go to Best Buy and bought a Panasonic Lumix camera, a really small little camera. I think it cost me $75 and I bought it because it was orange and it shot in full HD 720p. It created videos like this. The audio was bad. The video quality is awful, but you know, it allowed me to make videos without my webcam. <laughs> Obviously things got way better once I got my first DSLR, which was a Canon a T3i. I believe it's the 550D in the UK. If you are interested in that type of creatory content, by the way, I do have an entire blog entry on my website where I detail what camera I recommend starting with if you're getting into YouTubing, uh, mid-range and the current kit that I use. I wrote at giant descriptions on each one, why I chose them, why they're good. So if you're interested in that, uh, do click the link in the description. Not sponsored, I guess, because. I can't sponsor myself. And lastly, Charla asks, if you had to move to a new city in England, where would you choose? This is a difficult question because if I had to move from London, I'd rather just leave the country. I've said this before. I'd rather just move to a country where I maybe can better my Spanish, better my German. I don't know. I might just move to Australia. I think that'd be nice. I'd live in Australia for a bit. I'd rather live in Sydney. <laughs> but gosh, if you had a gun to my head and were like, you have to move to a different city in England, I guess I would just choose one that's really close to London so that I could still be in London. So somewhere like Marlowe where my girlfriend's family lives. So that that's easy. But God, what would I do? Nothing, be so bored. Especially cause from Marlowe, you have to get the Marlowe donkey into Maidenhead and then take the Lizzie line and uh, no, no. I really enjoyed my time in Liverpool. I've enjoyed, I lived in Brighton for two weeks, but I'm just a London guy, all right? I'm a London guy. And that is about it for the Q and A. I really appreciate you stopping on by and watching this one. Uh, and I also really do appreciate all the kind words that you left me on last week's video. Uh, thank you so much. I've been doing this for so long that it is really <laughs> difficult to look at old footage and understand that that is also me and that people watched me for different reasons than they do now and, you know, but I do appreciate that you're all still here. So thank you so much for watching. Now, in terms of the future of this channel, I have spent the last week painstakingly planning out my next couple months of content that I'm working on. And uh, just looking through my notion here, I've got my sequel to the UK developers video should be coming out in two or three weeks. I've spent a lot of time on that and I'm gonna be filming it uh, this upcoming week. That's very exciting. I've got actually more Reddit content in the works, maybe collab wise, where I have a friend just chat with me about some stuff, which would be good. And then I'm bringing back my series on British food. Uh, I feel like food laws really interest me. So I, I'm going back into that and some duo videos because I'm that duo guy. I've actually got one planned for uh, next month as well. So stay tuned, future of the channel, looking bright. Hopefully uh, everyone that didn't recognize me when I got long hair is gonna see me in their feeds and be like, oh my God, it's that guy. And all will be well. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next Sunday. Goodbye. I, I, I feel your sense of style has been, been, been steadily improving for a while. I, 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 bars.